a follow-up story about what we told you last night, the conviction of Jerry Lundergan in federal court. The father of Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes was found guilty of illegally funneling money to her U.S. Senate campaign. Lundergan and longtime Democratic consultant Dale Emmons stood trial together, convicted on 10 charges and six charges respectively. Lundergan faces up to 110 years in prison when he and Emmons are sentenced in January. Uh, Kevin, I don't know if Allison had a political future beyond where she was before this. What do you, is there a future for her now? Well, I think, you know, it's up to Allison. You know, she's happy being a mom and she's happy where she's at, I'm sure. It's up to Allison. You know, unfortunately, things like this do happen and uh, there's no place for it in politics, especially in Lexington and Kentucky. Um, you know, you shouldn't do it. So 110 years, that sounds crazy. That sounds like a lot of time. You don't. I, I doubt it 110 years. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, you know, I know that's an awful gonna, long time. Yeah. You know, I'm sure none of us will be around to see that sentence feel, fulfilled. But, you know, I, I think um, this will be appealed several different levels. It'll be a year before we see what actually happens. And it's not even until January that the sentencing happens. So I'm sure they'll have their uh, ducks, in, ducks in a row waiting for that. But, yeah, you're right. I did, this is I, 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 this is so dirty and, and yucky. There's I no just, place for yeah. it. It hurts us all. Anyone yep. that ever wants to run, it hurts us. Yep. All right, in Washington, Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell recently fired back in the ongoing battle over appointments to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Senate Majority Leader joined 52 of his Republican colleagues in sending a letter to the high court after Democrats urged justices not to take up so-called political projects, like a new challenge to New York City's gun laws. The Democrats argued that the case was part of an effort to install a conservative majority on the court and strike down gun laws, and they suggested that voters may eventually demand the Supreme Court be restructured. McConnell says that's a clear threat to load the court with left-leaning justices if the opportunity arises. Kevin, one could argue that Mitch McConnell wanted to load the Supreme Court with uh, conservative-leaning justices. And I'm sure they do. Yeah. I mean, it depends on who's in power. Both sides have done it. So just stop it. Leave the Supreme Court alone. They can make their own decision as to who they want to hear, what case they want to hear, and leave it at that. Anytime a legislative body gets in, in front of the judicial body, it really scares me, and I think there's no place for it. That's why, that's why it's called checks and balances, am I right? You are correct. That's why we have those walls up. And, and obviously it's both sides playing politics mm -hmm. and trying to juggle that Supreme Court so that whatever goes before them, it's, it, they get their way. Uh, I don't think that's what our forefathers wanted. And I don't think that's what either side should be doing now. Because if it was on the other foot and the Democrats had control, yeah. they wouldn't say a word. Yeah, exactly. All right. President Trump's proposal to rid the market of flavored e-cigarettes has people in the vaping industry worried, including here in Kentucky. The proposed ban comes amid startling reports of nearly 500 cases of vaping-related illnesses across dozens of states. The CDC has urged smokers of traditional cigarettes not to turn to vaping as an alternative, but Tony Florence, president of the Vapor Stockroom here in Lexington, says his industry is being unfairly demonized. He points to an FDA finding that in many cases, patients report getting sick from vaping THC product as opposed to the flavored nicotine products. CDC is basically trying to cover their base. They said definitely no THC products uh, off the streets and no e-cigarettes. It's really interesting because they're conflating the two. They're saying they're basically the same product when really it's not. And one is you're vaping THC and the other one is you're vaping nicotine. Florence says he wants to meet with local health, health officials and have a conversation about the best path forward. Kevin, he also says that this could um, almost completely destroy the, the vaping industry. And is, you can drive around anywhere in the state of Kentucky and find a, a vape shop within five feet. Yeah, this industry exploded, and as a small business owner, I'm always leery of putting a business out of business. But in this case, where there's smoke, there's fire, no pun intended. <laughs> There's a lot of things happening with vaping. Our kids are being destroyed. Our health is being destroyed. And I think there's enough evidence out there that something has to be done. Don't know if it, we can all blame it on there's THE out there, but that's the problem. They don't know what's in that stuff. So we also already know that cigarettes cause those same things. Why are we not pushing back on that? You know, I think there's more media attention today. I think there's more information out there. I think when cigarettes came out, what, 100 years yeah. ago, there just wasn't as much information and just, uh, distribution of information. So 
uh, I think that's the case here. All right. The issue of school security continues to make headlines, and the effects of it here in Fayette County have proven controversial in practice. Students at Lafayette High School are complaining after the latest phase of security upgrades went into effect yesterday. They say the screening process that makes use of metal detectors and bag searches caused delays in excess of 20 minutes as students waited in line to get in. An opinion piece in the Lafayette School newspaper quotes students who say the changes are creating a stressful learning environment, making school feel more like a prison or an airport. They also cite inconsistencies in how the searches are conducted. Parents have also reached out to the superintendent saying kids left standing outside are in a sitting duck situation for violence. Kevin, I, I, you know, what, what choice do the schools have, though? They've well, got to put security measures in place. You're exactly right, but we knew this was going to happen. We knew after September 11th or September 1st, 2011, mm -hmm. that we were going to have to do those things at airports. Now we're used to it. I think it's a, we'll get used to this, but it, this is what the world we live in. This is what we have to do to mm -hmm. keep our kids safe. I know it's an inconvenience, but a lot of times being safe is an inconvenience. And let's put it this way. This is not a solve all. No. If somebody yeah. wants to shoot up a school, they will get in there and do it. Yep. There's nothing we're going to do in our power, but we have to do everything we can to try to prevent it. And this was the first um, first go through this week, right? So I think some of those kinks will get ironed out as it becomes part of habit. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't really say that in the story, but this yeah. was the first week. So yeah. you're right. Yeah. We'll get it, used to it. They'll work it out and hopefully our schools will be safer. I hope so, too. All right. Up next on Hey, Kentucky, we return to the topic of UK's matchup with the Gators. Drew Franklin brings us another edition of Drew's. Five Friday football facts next on Hakin' Time.